Hey guys, how's it going? Dude here, I am back with another video. Today I am going to talk about the mysterious death of Eliza Lamb. On the 26th of January 2013, Eliza arrived in Los Angeles, continuing her solo travels of the west coast of America. It was a break from her studies at the University of British Columbia in Canada, Vancouver, where she was from. Now her family was incredibly wary of her going traveling alone, and because of this, Eliza rang her parents every single day to check in with them and so that they knew that she was safe. This was until January 31st when the parents received no call. It was the day that she was supposed to check out of her hotel in Los Angeles, the Cecil. Police searched the premises that day but found nothing. It would be 18 days later that Eliza's naked body would be found in the water tanks on the roof of the hotel but it gets so bizarre. She was eventually discovered due to complaints from people staying at the hotel that the water was turning black and discoloured, the water pressure was low and the water didn't taste right. This was because Eliza's body was decomposing in the water tank that was providing the entire hotel with water. Now the hotel manager at the time said that when Eliza checked in, she checked into a hostel style shared room. But this was short lived because apparently the people she was sharing the room with complained about Eliza for behaving very oddly. Now before Eliza was discovered, CCTV footage was found of Eliza's final moments and it just adds even more questions to what actually happened to Eliza. Check it out. So as you can see from the footage, she was incredibly distressed. She seemed to be hiding, but then in other moments, she seemed to be communicating with someone or something outside of the lift. It is important to note that Eliza did suffer from bipolar disorder and was on up to four different medications that day. However, the toxicology reports of Eliza's autopsy clearly state there was no alcohol and no hallucinogenic or illegal drugs in her system. So her irrational behavior can't be put down to illegal substances or alcohol. However, there is one piece of medication that she wasn't taking regularly, but should have been, that does have psychotic side effects, so it could have been that, potentially, but that is just a hypothesis. So as I said, this was the last time that Eliza was seen alive. So how did she go from being in the elevator to on the roof in the tank naked. Her clothes were found next to her inside the tank. Now, there are several ways to get up onto the roof. You can exit from the windows high up in the hotel and then use the fire escape to climb up to the roof. There is also a door directly leading to the roof. However, this is alarmed 24 seven and no alarms were registered that day. But it gets even more bizarre. Let's say she did go out the window and climb up to the top of the roof. She would have to climb up onto the top of the tank, open up the tank which has an incredibly heavy lid, get inside and then close the lid afterwards. 
This is very difficult when you think she'll plunge into the water to then have to get up and reach over and pull a heavy lid back on top of herself. It just doesn't seem to add up. So you then have the theory of, well, maybe she was murdered and taken up there and dumped, but there was no trauma to the body at all. There was no defense wounds on the body at all. So some have gone to more paranormal explanations in order to try and explain what happened to Eliza. So the theory goes that she was having a conversation with a ghost or demon or was possessed during this footage. She certainly does act erratically. She seems to be very scared of something. And also, do you notice that the elevator doors, even when she stood outside the elevator and inside the elevator, don't close like they normally would. It doesn't take that long, especially after you push buttons to go up or down, for an elevator door to close. Is something keeping that door open. It's important to note that the Cecil Hotel has a very dark and paranormal history. It opened in 1927 and since then it has had 16 separate unexplained deaths and supernatural occurrences. It's housed a few serial killers including Richard Ramirez and there is a theory that she is in fact communicating with the ghost of Richard Ramirez. Richard Ramirez stayed at the hotel between 1984 and 1985 and after he killed people would return to the hotel, dump his bloody clothes just outside the hotel and then walk into the hotel half naked. Apparently the hotel was so poorly run in the 80s and in such disarray that people didn't even raise an eyebrow to Ramirez doing this on a regular basis. Also, Ramirez practiced satanic rituals inside the hotel. Could it be that he summoned forth a demon that still haunts that hotel to this very day? There was another serial killer in 1991 that stayed there and also the hotel bar is one of the last places that the Black Dahlia was seen before she was tragically murdered. There is another theory which involves the infamous elevator ritual, which apparently is a ritual that you can do in a building that is 10 floors or higher, where you transport to another realm or dimension. Because of the way she frantically pushes the buttons on the wall has led some people on the internet to believe this ritual. The ritual goes as follows. To start the ritual, you must enter the elevator. Press the fourth floor. Do not proceed if someone enters the elevator or one of the people doing the ritual leaves the elevator. If someone does that, start from the beginning. Every single time someone comes in or someone leaves, you have to start again, okay? So press the fourth floor, then press the second floor, then press the sixth floor, then back to the second floor, then press the tenth floor, then press the fifth floor. If a woman enters the elevator at the fifth floor, do not look at her. Do not speak. Do not talk to her. That woman is not a human. If you do, she will decide to keep you for her own. Press the first floor. The elevator will either ascend or descend. Leave and do not look back. If the elevator reaches the 10th floor, leave and do not respond to the woman if she asks where are you going or what's wrong. Her voice will be high when she asks that. Apparently, once you've done this ritual, when you exit the elevator, you will be in a different dimension. If you're alone, you're in the other world. Electronics will not work in this other world and the other world is identical to our own. But the two differences you will see here, all the lights will be off and the only thing you'll be able to see from the windows is a red cross in the distance. To return back to our world, you must go to the same elevator and press the same buttons only if you leave the 10th floor. 4, 2, 6, 2, 10, 5. When you reach the 5th floor, press the button for the 1st floor. The elevator will again begin to ascend to the 10th floor. Press any other floor's buttons to cancel the ascension. You must press the button you use to cancel the ascension before you reach the 10th floor floor. After you reach the first floor, check your surroundings carefully. If anything seems off, even the smallest detail, do not exit the elevator. If you detect something wrong, repeat step two until your surroundings look as they should. Once you're confident you have returned to your own world, you may safely exit the elevator. Now, of course, 
I'm sure there are people in the comments that are now gonna take note of this elevator ritual and probably go and try it out if you do. All I can say is I hope that you return safely. Do I believe that this is a real thing? No. Have I tried it? No. Would I try it? Probably not, which says a lot about this kind of thing. You know, it's like, I, I think it's bullshit, but I'm not willing to risk going to a different dimension and getting killed by some horrible ghost woman to find out, you know? But on the internet, a lot of people think that this may have been what happened to Eliza. Oh, and many, many, many people have thrown themselves from the Cecil Hotel to their death, so much so that local residents call it the Suicide Hotel. So the place has an incredibly dark history. So the fact that this happened there and it's so odd and so unexplainable adds fuel to all of these theories. I would love to know what you think down below. Ultimately, Eliza's death was put down to accidental drowning. The family did put an appeal against this, stating that it was neglectful of the hotel to allow her to get up to the roof, but of course the hotel pleaded against this and won because they said that there are normal measures to get to the roof. They don't know how she got there, but there is an alarm door and they're not supposed to be up there, so why would they know that is where that she would have been that whole time? It was also reported from the maintenance guy who found her body after the complaints from the people staying at the hotel. When he went up there to find her, he opened up the hatch to see her lifeless, decaying face floating just 12 inches from his own. What a terrifying situation that would be to be in. So there we go guys, that's a mystery that is technically solved but I believe it to still be unsolved. Is there something paranormal going on at that hotel? There have been many many reports and sightings over the years, it wouldn't surprise me. Was she murdered? If that is the case, the person who did so was clearly aware that there would be a camera in that elevator and did very well to stay out of the way. Or was Eliza just in a very poor mental state? and took her own life. The official report says accidental drowning. I don't think we will ever know. But all I can say is rest in peace to Eliza Lamb and my thoughts are with the family. Thank you so much for watching guys. I would love to know what you think down below. As always, please like, share and subscribe if you want to support me. Patreon is an amazing way to do that. You can find the link down below. I also stream on twitch.tv forward slash studio rhino. I've got an amazing collaboration with Hobo Jack. The links for all that stuff is down below. Thank you so much guys. I really do appreciate it. You guys have been supporting me so much this year it's amazing so thank you so so much share the channel guys i'll see you in the next one sweet one geese